Hello guys, Lincoln here and today I thought it was time to make a new tier list for 2023, the first one for this year. And if you haven't done so yet, go to www.youtube.com slash c slash LincolnYT to get access to all of the hundreds of videos that I have made. And please subscribe as well so we can continue doing these things. I have been playing for over a year now and I'm currently ranked 4th in Arena in, on the Merge server with the 12 strongest servers together. And uh, the opinion of my heroes, the strongest ones, have actually been changing a lot lately and basically since the beginning of the game where we had the Assassin being the strongest on the server, they are not any longer. Basically, once Fangrim showed up and nerfing all of the melee heroes that couldn't get anywhere because of his Vortex, they all got basically nerfed. And uh, these days, this is actually a picture of something I want to show you later. This is basically a kill of a Harbinger. 20 million damage plus from uh, a guildy, Camille. Just showing you why some of these heroes actually are quite good, even though uh, in all other game modes they are not. So, for example, this one, Stamatus. He actually can be actually quite tricky uh, even in um, Arena. If you have him behind Lucretia, then you will actually boost Lucretia a lot. And if you're lucky, you could one-shot a lot of heroes with her ultimate. So some uses him that way. But let's go through all of the heroes and the grades at once. And then we might look at this picture again later. And the metas are still, since Fangrim basically took over, the supporter class. You don't have a single supporter that is C-ranked. Most of them are S, double S or A ranked heroes. And the way I have graded my heroes are S being basically the strongest heroes, then you have A, B and C being the lowest. You can get a double S, but only if you're basically, you can't be without this hero in the end game. And there's only two heroes, it's Fangrim and it's Magla still, even though she's been nerfed. These two heroes, you will do everything with these two heroes basically. And uh, then I've given some heroes a S plus, and that's when they are basically almost not changeable, but you can alter them between a few other heroes so they get an S plus. And as you can see, when it comes to the supporter class, you have Fangrim being the best in the game. It's a legendary one. This is the one you need to get and the only one you need to focus on getting tokens to, if you can. You don't really need him that high level. Uh, for him to be really good. You want him, if possible, to six stars so you can use his uh, uh, lost ability, but it's not that... Uh, I won't say it's not important, it's really important. I actually have Fangrim with an ultimate uh, at max level and so his lost ability, since he will actually reduce the attack spin of the opponent's heroes with up to 50%, but the most important is his Vortex, and he will do that even if he's a level 1 hero or not. So don't really need him to be too high, but you want, of course, to push him as much as possible. When it comes to the S-plus heroes, you have two of them, and they, they are basically a part of the Fangrim team combo. So there are, th there are four heroes for the Fangrim team combo, and with these four, you always use them basically when you fight more than one opponent. In Arena, you don't need to use this combo, but when you're fighting mansions or taking capitals or you know that you will fight more than one opponent, well, then you want Fangrim. He's a must, together with the other SS hero that is Magla, the Ranger. And then you have the other two supporters that are a must for the Fangrim team combo, and that's Lacroix and it's Nico Lambda. So that's why these get the S+. And with this setup, these four heroes, this is basically all you need to um, win against most opponents. And then you can throw in the last one, depending on what you want. Some are using Dorian, uh, some are using, uh, even Dr. Wolfgang can actually be good to get some extra heals up. So he got an A plus here. Alfred also really good since he boosts his entire team. A, he gets an A for now. Really good for the Harbingers as well. When it comes to the Bruisers, I would actually say supporters and bruisers being the two strongest classes these days. So as a beginner, 
what you want to farm the most it's the supporter tokens especially supporter tokens and then you get to the bruisers but they are much harder to farm the army counts are actually much harder just because you will have dorian a lot of times as an opponent and he usually kill one of your heroes if you're not strong enough so it's really hard for the newbies to kill the bruisers camps but as a beginner farming the army camps with uh, with supporter tokens really easy a lot easier to kill harder camps as well so farm as much as you can because you need the supporters as well when you do the catacombs you need a lot of supporters not only one if your supporter dies in a catacomb you're basically over there's so many waves you're going to do so when i if i would restart i would actually start by getting three or four supporters a lot of healing so i can switch them around uh, with the rest of my main team so I have three dpsers and then basically get three or four of these supporters and you're set as a beginner this is what you want and then you would go for basically the most important one in the beginning will be Altene and Dr. Wolfgang if you can get Dr. Wolfgang to four star early on in the game you will be able to manage any catacomb basically and uh, this is what you will struggle with the most getting some heals up Altene is really good for it but Altene can't self-heal Dr. Wolfgang can, and he can tank as well. Really strong for the catacombs. This is the one you want. So early on, not as important with Lacroix or Nicole Lambda because they don't heal as much. These are the end game supporters, but you will be needing a lot of tokens to level them up later on. But Dr. Wolfgang, Altene, and uh, as well Voss, you will need all of them to um, complete the catacombs and do well in dungeons as well. Continue with the Bruisers, we have two S plus ranked heroes here and it's Dorian and it's Birsha. You will always see these as end game heroes in Arena. These are two of them that can make quite a difference compared to all of the other melee heroes because Assassins, as I mentioned, they can't get to any opponent. But these two can. Birsha will rush towards one, really effective way to rush towards Magla for example. And Dorian, since he has the hook and grab ability, as soon as he gets hit once, he can basically one-shot an opponent if you get him strong enough. As you can see, my Dorian has almost 750k in power. This is the one I've been going for. And that's why I do quite well in Arena as well. For the other Bruisers, well, you have Orlin and Catherine, some of the worst heroes in-game. Skip those. You have still Ulfuria, still really strong. Got the nerf, no longer an S-ranked hero. But can use her in the arena as well, even though she has lost some in grade. Sergei, for now, I'm giving an A. I want to see him um, more before I give him any more. He should be better than, for example, Ulfuria. But we have the problem with the tokens, the token access and stuff like that. So for now, we give him an A. Next class that's actually really good, it's the supporters and we have uh, in particular well actually not two we actually have four that seems really really good we have we can talk about those that are terrible i actually leveled my huyun and he's at i think it's almost 900k it should see you can see it but it's 876,000 power and i can do anything with this guy a legendary hero with maxed abilities as well Terrible hero, can't do anything with him, he dies too easily, can't do anything, he's a crap. Rangulf, no good. Admiral Cornelius, no good. But then you have four other heroes that are awesome in PvP, especially three of them. Albus will actually be more of a hero for Harbingers and boss battles, will do really good against those fights. For now, haven't seen him still doing well in Arena. But for the end game, you have seen, I have seen Isara so many times. I'm using Daeva myself. Really good as an anti Fangrim team uh, uh, heroes. Uh, you would need heroes that do range damage to reach when Fangrim is doing his vortex. And I've actually started seeing Oscoth as well doing quite well in, um, if we go back to. Uh, 
to the arena score list. We actually have Dakila here that is ranked third and he has a really strong um, Oscoth that um, I think uh, 700 or 800 K in power and uh, starting to do really well with that one. So a lot of nukers that actually do quite well. Then we have the Rangers, and basically we have one that's only interesting and, well, the best in game. You have Magla, you want that stun, you need to focus on her. And then we have actually Altosk doing quite well now, since we actually can get a lot of tokens as well from, um, from Arena tokens. This is actually one that can, you can actually get to uh, max level if you would focus on this one with arena tokens if you buy him and uh, he's a must as well if you want to do well against the harbingers he will um, boost the entire team to do really good and uh, he's really efficient against the supporters as well so let's give him an s the rest of the heroes not so much only reason stamatus gets a b is because he can boost uh, for uh, the Harbingers and actually can boost Lucretia as well in Arena if needed. But basically all of the other Rangers are really useless, even though uh, we have Nifa that could be interesting uh, if you make her strong enough. But um, we never see these heroes. The only one we do see is Countess Magla and Altosk when it comes to the endgame Rangers for now. When it comes to tanks, I basically just put a big C on every hero. Tanks are worst class in the game. We have now an exception and that's actually Drogo. That actually will be a uh, S-ranked hero. He will actually do insane damage from what I can see. I've done some test drives on him on the Harbingers at low level. He do a lot more damage than other heroes at the same level as him. So I think this could actually be a monster. If you can manage to put him in the center, he won't die for a long time and could actually wipe maybe the entire opponent's team if you can get to them without the Fangrim problem. So uh, this is one of those heroes that actually will be interesting, but all of the other basically tanks, all of them are crap. Don't go for tanks, don't focus on them at all. Father Arno, somewhat better since he's a legendary, but then again, he's a legendary, won't be that easy getting him high enough in level. So in general, just give a C to all of the tanks for now. And then we have the Assassins and uh, no longer the meta class as I mentioned, but they are really strong, each and every one of these heroes. They are A ranked. Sadaharu being nerfed, no longer a S ranked hero in my opinion. Could be because of the Harbingers, but I see him less in arena in the end game. You will actually see Lucretia do more fights in the end game arena and even Locust than Sadaharo. He's actually dropping more and more. Even Mantis, you will see. So all of the uh, assassins, they are good. If they can get to the opponents, their biggest problem is the Fangrim Vortex problem. So there you have it for now. See you guys.